We're starting the day off with the word of God. This is 2 Timothy 2. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now listen to this. This is important. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. That's important. Look at that. We got to remember this. I don't think it's taught a lot, but it's important to remember. And it's double, triple important to remember. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must. It will come. Jesus says the world will hate you. Why? Because it hated him, Jesus, first. The hardship will come. So if you're not ready for it, if you don't expect it, when it comes, it'll hit a lot worse. Accept it. It'll hurt less. A friend of mine said that when I was complaining about something. She was like, accept it. It'll hurt less. And I thought, wow, that's true. So accept the truth. It'll hurt less. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And then it goes on. Verse four, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. I've heard other translations say, no soldier entangles himself in the affairs of civilian life because that's how the military divides. You're either a warrior or you're a civilian. A civilian is one that is not engaged in the military. So we are in the military as Christians, clearly. It says that we fight a war, not against flesh and blood, as we see in the world with guns and weapons. No, we fight a spiritual battle and it is constant. The enemy that is against you will never stop. Therefore, you don't really have a choice. You were entered into this war at birth. And at birth, there was an enemy that was trying to destroy you. And guess what? You will always win the war if you read the words of the gospel. Because the words of the gospel will save your life, not only save your life, defend your life, not only defend your life, but kill the enemy. It's crazy. I shouldn't say it's crazy. That is the truth. The word of God is your weapon against the enemy. It is your defense. It is your everything, your rock. You will win if you abide, if you read these words and remember them, because that's all life is. Even people who aren't Christian understand life is in the mind. It's how you think. If you have a positive attitude, you could be anywhere. You can have any amount of money. You could have any job and you could be at peace because guess what? There are people with every amount of money from billions of dollars to nothing that are happy. How the heck can happiness go up and down the scale like that? It's like people know some stuff that's outside of this world, what you can see with your eyes. Obviously, money is not the, the measure, but that's what we all go for because unfortunately, it's how the fall of man worked. We have to work for what we get. But we can't attribute this material life to what's actually happening, which is spiritual warfare. So you are in a war. You're part of the military. Do not entangle your life in the civilian affairs, in the affairs of people that are not Christian, that are not in the war. They're not in the spiritual battle because they don't even know it exists. They're not preparing. They're just going about their day. They're just talking about the news. They're just talking about random things. But you get around other people that are also part of the military, that are also fighting this good fight. No one engaged in warfare, you as a Christian, spiritual warfare, nonstop. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Who enlisted you? Jesus. God. God through his son Jesus enlisted you as a soldier and you're fighting this war. And what happens? You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Remember that. It'll help you when the hardship comes. And also, this is verse five. If anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first 
to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Ask God for understanding. Ask him for wisdom. He says he'll give you. A lot of times I read the words of the Bible, and I don't fully understand it until I read it again, until I pray about it, until I read it again. Maybe a year later, just ask God. It's a process. Some things will jump at you right away. You'll be like, I know what that means. Some things will be like, that's a little enigmatic. I, I don't understand. That's why we're part of the body of Christ too. You go to church. You go around other Christians. You read the Bible together. That's so important. Read it together. Somebody will have a, a different angle to think about something and you'll have a different angle. And then together, it all works. It's not just you alone. It's not just me alone here reading. Right now, I'm alone here reading, but later today, I'll be with other Christians and we'll talk about these things. Verse 8, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. This is Paul. Paul is suffering trouble to the point where he's chained up for the gospel. Like we said, endure suffering. But the word of God is not chained, period. The word of God is not chained. That's going back to that scale I was talking about of money. The word of God is not chained. It is not pinpointed to money, job, family. It's not pinpointed to anything. The word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The elect... God's people, those that were foreordained, preordained. That's a different conversation to have. But you are part of God's chosen. You've been given his word and you have the choice to read it or not. That's free will. We can argue the free will thing. You have the free will right now to pray, to look at the word and ask for wisdom. And I would recommend doing that because it will change your life. 11. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Crazy. If we die with him, if we take up our cross daily and die to our flesh with him, we will live with him. And that goes deeper to saying the apostles of that day, they died for the sake of the gospel and they're going to live with him. So we have to armor our minds. We're in a war. In a war, people die sometimes in the flesh, but in the spirit, like it says, the word of God is not chained. Your spirit is not chained. You are with God. It doesn't matter if, if they kill your flesh. Remember that verse? Don't fear those who can just kill the flesh but not the soul, that's humans, but fear the one that can kill both body and soul, that's God, fear God, be on God's side, read his word and you'll be fine, that's something I realized too, it's like people go around the world scared, I was going around the world scared of, of hell, heaven, you know, what's happening in the world, is the world going to end, why, because I wasn't reading God's word and following it, like I knew I was wrong, so I was in some sort of anxiety, it's like I'm doing the wrong thing, don't come back now, God, please. Let me just repent. Yo, this is your sign. Repent now. Read God's word now. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ today. And if you don't think you have the strength, ask God for strength. Remember that. You don't have to have this crazy strength to just be like, boom, I'm perfect today. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about if people are willfully doing things that they know are wrong, indulging in things that you know are wrong, if you don't have the strength to stop, go like this. Close your eyes and say, God, I want to let this go, but I can't. Can you help me? And guess what? Slowly and surely he will. But you doing the work of asking is a step. Because think about what happened before you took that step. You did nothing. You just did your work. You just watched YouTube videos. You just watched TV shows, you just called your friends, you just like drove your car down the street and you didn't even talk to God. Talk to him, things will start changing. That's what I'm saying. Verse 14. You know what? I'm going to end there. This video is 10 minutes long. I'm going to end right there. 
That was 2 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 13. And we can do the other ones later. But yeah, that's powerful verses. To recap, you can rewatch the video or I'll just go through it real quick. Be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ. And that's another thing. Remember that Jesus Christ gives grace. We don't have to be perfect. I am a sinner. We are all sinners. He gives grace. God gave Jesus Christ as a sign of his mercy and grace. He knew that we can't do it alone, so he gave us a sacrificial lamb, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Praise God for that. But, not but. That's a beautiful thing. In light of that, remember that you have to endure hardship. But the hardship you endure here is temporary, and the glory will be forever. Forever. Remember, just, it's hard to even conceptualize forever. Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. This is why the words are important, because you remember them, and then when you're enduring hardship, you're like, that's right. The words of God said, just as Paul suffered as well, Paul wrote that we should endure hardship, that we will endure hardship. So when the hardship comes, we will be ready and we will say, look, Jesus Christ died for me, was murdered. So up to the point of that, me being murdered for him, it's like, my life is his because without him, I'd be dead anyways. You know what I'm saying? It's like having those thoughts in your head will guard you against what might happen. But if you don't have those thoughts in your head, hardship will come. You don't even know what the word of God says. And you're like, why is this happening? Because you didn't read it. You see what I mean? If you read and know that the suffering will lead to future glory, as I talked about, it was in First Peter, your suffering will lead to future glory. If you have that in your head, you'll say, look, the suffering's temporary, but the future will be glorious. If you don't have that in your head, you'll just be thinking why and your hope will be snuffed out. You need hope to endure hardship. Remember, you are in warfare. You are part of the military, God's military, the spiritual warfare. So don't become entangled in civilian affairs. Random talks with people about nothing. Focus on God with people who love God. And you'll be ready. This life is short. Short, short. Yeah, so look, Paul says, I suffered trouble. I suffered trouble even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chains. Chained. I suffered trouble even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things. All things. All things includes all things right here man if we die with him we shall live with him if we endure we shall also reign remember that if we die with him we will live with him if we endure for a short time it might be this short it might be this short it might be this short but that's still short because eternity doesn't end it starts and it doesn't end it already started it never ends Maybe it didn't even start. It just always was. Look, this is conceptualizations that I don't understand. Eternity is current and it will never end. That's all you need to know. It will never end. I can say that forever and I can just, it will never end. Eternity will literally never end. 80 years go by, there's 80 more. And then there's 80 more. And then there's 100 more. And then there's 1,000 more. And there's a million more. And then there's a million more after the million that just passed. But that precedes 10 billion more. But remember, with God, every day, what does it say? I'm going to end with that. Just remember, you're suffering small. Maybe it, it's 90 years. Maybe it's 100. Maybe you literally suffer every day for 90 years. But guess what? One day that will end. And then, this will happen. Watch this. One day is like a thousand years. This is what I wanted to say. If you guys don't know this verse, it's important to remember. Second Peter 3.8. It says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. So, Basically, that's to say we don't even know how time, time isn't how it is now. It's not like a billion years go by, it's going to feel like a billion years. It's going to feel like 
You're just in the presence of God. I think a billion years will go by and it will feel like a second. Or a day. A thousand years will go by and it will feel like a day. That's exactly what the Bible says. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. So you could be with God and, and one day feels like a thousand years, but a thousand years feels like a day. I can't even go into the philosophy of that. It's better than this life. No more tears after this death. After this life, after we die in this life, there's no more tears and it's eternal peace. Praise God for that.